Hey from Texas, it's Lindy Fulford. And I was really, really hoping that I was gonna be able to finalize uh, this series on how marriage counseling saved our marriage. And I was hoping to have Scott right here by my side, but he is in bed sick tonight. So it will be just me um, and that'll be okay. So I wanna get everybody kind of caught back up where we are. It's 2010, Scott and I have been married for eight years now. He has quit work. I'm working full time. He is doing all the honeydews. He's getting up with the kids, making sure their work's done when they get home. And um, literally, you guys, I have a list. If I could find it, I would pull it out. It's probably three pages long of honeydews. Just things that needed done around the house and little things here and there that just never got taken care of. And so for the next three years, we just kind of went through this process where I worked all the time, literally you guys, I worked all the time, I was working all hours of the night, enough to where Ashlyn came home one time and told me she hated coming home because all I ever did was work and I didn't even think of it that way, I just thought of it as I have to pay the bills and I'm going to work hard and that's no big deal. Little did I know that Scott was at home and he was, it gets really lonely at home when you're by yourself and even though I was working at home, I was in the house and he was out in the shop. And so, to make the time pass by, Scott was drinking. So, not only was he home alone, and he's drinking, and the worst part of it, you guys, two times, Scott and I were talking about this last night, trying to figure out where, like, what all happened. Twice, he sat me down and told me he thought he had a drinking problem. And I did nothing. It was super selfish, because I thought to myself, well, that's your problem, not mine. And you guys, that is not how a marriage works at all. Um, I should have stopped what I was doing right then and we should have figured out what we needed to do to take care of it and gotten help and we did not. So that was one of the biggest issues is because he was home and he had this list three miles long of stuff to do, where to start. And I know people are like, just start, just pick the first thing and then go. And it's just only because I ended up home for a year do I realize it is not that easy when you have a list that's so overwhelming. If you're not one of those people that just can jump on and pick one and go, you just get overwhelmed and you get lost. So it got to the point where I kind of got to be that nagging wife um, and I had to be. And he was, it was hiding the alcohol because he got tired of me nagging him all the time. But it came down to a point where, you know, I didn't know all the time how much he had a drink, we gotta go pick up kids. And, and so it just became this whirlwind of, you know, it's just a circle of arguing constantly. So fast forward to, and this, this didn't start out in 2010, and that's kind of where it started was 2010, but by 2013 was when it was really bad. So right before I was getting ready to have Brady was probably the worst, one of the worst times in our lives. All this was happening and I was told I had eight weeks to find another job and I was having Brady in seven and a half weeks. Yes, I was. I was huge, you guys. I gained 65 pounds with Brady. So on top of all of this fighting, I'm the one that currently is, you know, bringing in the money because we've agreed, Scott and I both agreed at, at one point that he was going to stay home. And now I'm getting ready to have no job and we're gonna have a brand new baby, and we got four kids in the house. You guys, it was mass chaos in our house. It was awful. And I don't know if you, you caught one of my lives um, previously a few weeks ago where I talked about stonewalling. You guys, I was really, really good at stonewalling. You can ask Scott, and I don't suggest it. It's, it's a bad thing. It does not help with communication at all. Um, in fact, the day that I went in to deliver Mr. Brady, which was March 18th, not right now, baby. Hi. Uh, which was March 18th um, of 2013. Scott and I weren't speaking on the way to the delivery room or uh, on the way to the hospital. Um, so I'm going to pause real quick because I, I, before we get into the fact that uh, we did go and, and we got help, I want to talk about something really serious, you guys. When you are having marital problems, be really, really careful who you talk to. Be careful who you confide in. And I only say that with the best of intentions, you guys. My best friend at the time sat and watched me big and fat and pregnant and cry my eyes out. 
And unfortunately, I still feel like to this day, a part of our friendship was ruined because she only heard my side of the story. And there is always two sides to every story. So be careful who you confide in. And I still love you girls. You know who you are. Um, so what did we do? Um, how, did we, how did we get past it? Well, I finally just said we gotta go, we gotta go get some help. So we went and talked to our pastor. And our, our pastor laid it all on the line. He had some words to say. He gave us the name. Actually, he gave Scott the name of marriage counselor. And it was up to Scott to go and, and call that marriage counselor. And he did. He called the marriage counselor, set up an appointment. We went. And we both had to be all in, you guys. And for me, it was one of those things. I come from a divorced family, and I swore I would never get divorced. And so it was important to me to be able to tell my kids, because I love Scott with all my heart. Like, all my heart. I love him. He is the man I love. But at some point that alcohol for me was too much and I just it was overwhelming and our fighting and everything but for our kids sake I had to be able to look them in the eyes and say I did everything possible I went every step we did everything that we could to try and resolve it and either it's gonna work or it's not gonna work but I owed it to my kids to tell them that we tried everything so we did. We went to the marriage counselor, and the marriage counselor was very, very open and honest with us, and he talked to us, and it took us several months, and a lot of the things I told him, he said to Scott, and a lot of things Scott told him, he said to me verbatim, and it's just interesting when it comes from a third party who doesn't know either one of you, the way you end up hearing it differently. It's so weird. I don't know why it works that way, but it does. And so even through marriage counseling, we kind of went up and down. We thought things were really good, and then all of a sudden, we would crash and burn. And at one point, um, Scott got really mad at me. It's the first time I've really seen my husband get mad at me. And we were in a, a session, <clears throat> and all I remember is, is leaving the session, and I was really upset, and I, I, did, I thought that was it. And I don't know what the counselor told him that day, but whatever it was, that is when everything really kind of started changing. Scott went 90 days, <clears throat> excuse me, Scott went 90 days without drinking. Um, that was kind of one of our conditions. And Scott went out and got a job. It wasn't a very high paying job. He'd been trying to get into this other place for a really, really long time. They just weren't hiring. So he went and got a job with Gainer Mountain. Didn't pay a lot, but he got there and he excelled. And he did great. And I mean, he did really, really well. And after he'd been there and gotten trained on everything, he worked in the firearms.